Chapter 1. The Trailer, Lottery, and Coal Mine. The trailer, the lottery, and the coal mine have played a massive role with what I wanted to change in the future of my family generations. Let's dive into the past that shaped me into the man I am today and laid the foundation for every bit of success I've had. The lottery. Growing up in rural Ohio, I remember the lottery being extremely popular for some reason. Maybe it is still. My father constantly played the pick four, he boxed it, he'd do it straight, he'd every which way. A portion of his money was literally allocated each day, each week, and each month on lottery tickets. My father's regular lottery play allowed us to imagine a better life, and our hopes went through the roof. We thought that when those numbers were called, all of our problems would magically dissolve and we'd be, you know, in a more fortunate position in life. There were times he was working in the coal mine and everything was going great. However, the memories that stick in my mind are the strikes, the constant financial strain, and the different side jobs just to make ends meet. Although he wasn't able to clear life's major hurdles, I gave him props for always trying new things. For what I remember, my father thought he was going to beat the system. He played the numbers over and over and even kept track of them in a book. He spent more time attempting to win as a gambler than he did to attempt to be a successful businessman. This playbook created a false hope that ultimately caused me to despise the lottery. I hated the fact that I was waiting on something I wasn't able to control through hard work, perseverance, and proper education. I couldn't make it happen. It was a perpetual cycle of building up hope only to be followed with the ultimate letdown. Subscribing to the lottery as a solution to your problem simply isn't reality. And endorsing this idea is a one-way ticket to developing a serious gambling problem. I wasn't fully aware of what was really happening at that time, but I now realize the problems of this mindset can create. My father passed away years ago and losing him is still one of the worst days of my life. There were loose ends. I wish I could have changed and lost conversations that needed to be had. As I get older, I wish I could talk to him. And, you know, now as a more developed individual, he was a very nice person who just kind of lost his way with a few things in life. To be straight, the stories of him, oh, he got old, as he got older, were hard to hear, but still showed progress that he was trying harder the second time. My father died in a single car accident coming home from work. This traumatic event changed my life forever, but gave me major daily perspective. I'll never forget it. I would change nothing about the way I was raised, but I wouldn't be me without these experiences. The experiences from my childhood, my upbringing, have made me stronger and way more insightful. I do now that I do know that he loved my sister and I. I wish I could paint him in a perfect light, but I can't. I wish that it could have ended differently but it didn't so we have to keep it for keep it moving and keep it forward with a heavy heart the trailer my parents divorced when i was 11 years old after my dad left we struggled to make ends meet my mom worked as many jobs as possible to make sure we had food on the table and even my grandparents chipped in where they were able once i hit the sixth grade we moved in with my grandparents my worldview became the shit began to shift dramatically this was the time I was first introduced to lifting weights. The man responsible for that was my idol, my grandfather, Frank Boone. When he, when he came home from his construction job each day, we would head straight for the weights. He explained to me that lifting weights would increase my confidence, increase my strength for sports, and the girls would like it too. I said, sign me up. I deeply admire and idolize my grandpa still to this day. He was big, strong, tough, and a man of his word. As I write this book in 2021, He's 93 years old, and he's actually in the hospital. He's exactly who I wanted to be growing up, an all-around great human being. Living with my grandpa over the course of that year helped teach me the value of consistency with lifting weights. My first taste of progress was a few months in when I started to see that little delt cut <laughs> while doing upright rows. That's all it took. My confidence soared, and I was 100% hooked on the feeling of lifting weights and making myself better. As I added, as an added bonus, my new obsession allowed me to spend a great deal of time with the man who served as my main father figure my entire life. No matter if we were lifting weights or golfing, seeing my grandfather on a regular basis was extremely important to me. 
Looking back, it's hard to understate how large of an impact this one year window uh, had on my life. I learned the value of being consistent, how to increase my confidence, and how to believe in myself. My grandfather helped me instill the confidence to believe I could do whatever I wanted to do. Always having him in my corner helped me on the road to success. Back on our feet. As we, wait, as we made our way back to independence, my mom began adjusting to being a single parent. The one place we were able to afford was a mile away from the front of a nice, quiet country road. There, there were some nice houses on the road, but at the end, sorry, I'm going to start this over again. Three, two, one. Back on our feet. As we made our way back to independence, my mom began adjusting to being a single parent. The one place we were able to afford was a mile away on the front of a nice, quiet country road. There were some nice houses towards the end of the road, but our future home was the 1970s trailer at the front. Let me paint you a picture. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It was rough. The trailer was old and falling apart. The roof sagged so badly that I would take a broomstick to push off the excess snow and water from the roof <laughs> so it wouldn't cave in. At 5'11", I could literally touch the ceiling with the top of my head. It got so bad, I had to get, my, had to get help from my Uncle Mike, who works construction, to install a makeshift brace just to hold the ceiling up. The, the rent due for the trailer was only $150 per month, and I know for a fact this payment was not easily made each time. My mother was a waitress, worked side jobs, and did anything she could, could do to make sure we were taken care of. We didn't have designer shit, but we didn't go without. I, viv I vividly remember this hardship and the stress that my mom endured, tirelessly trying to make ends meet. She was always struggling, persevering, and working hard, all while raising my sister Bettina and me. I always tell my mom, don't be upset when she reads stuff like this, because these are experiences that have helped shape me to be the animal I am today. She's truly a remarkable woman, and I'm so proud of her and my sister. We made it, even though things sometimes seem bleak. Finding inspiration. <clears throat> I was embarrassed to live in a trailer. All of my friends that played sports and had parents that worked in the sawmill or coal mine or at the school or had their own businesses, one of the families around, I'll start over. Three, two, one. Finding inspiration. I was embarrassed to live in the trailer. All my friends that, played, that I played sports with had parents that worked in the sawmill, coal mine, the school, or had their own businesses. One of the families around us, the Dorseys owned a grocery store. They had a nice house, multiple car garage, and a pool. Having the Dorseys as a template for how I wanted to live my life, it helped me greatly. Cliff and Cindy Dorsey, their son Josh, and his two sisters were such a model family for me to look up to. Cliff and Cindy did a great job just being an example for me even though they were completely unaware. Josh has grown up to be an entrepreneur himself, building a successful online chiropractic business. It's been fun to watch. All I had to do was ride my bike down to their house to see it real time. They had the big screen TV, Nintendo, pool, and all the four-wheelers. They were able to afford the luxuries because they took the entrepreneurial risk. For me, this revealed the door of possibilities, and that door hasn't closed since. If I had never been exposed to this environment, I would have never even imagined that it was possible for me to have all those things as an adult one day. And so, my pre preliminary model of entrepreneurship was born. I could see where I wanted to go, and I had a model to start with. Having the opportunity to look under the hood to see how people operate makes all the difference. Another major key was Cliff and his brother Kenny were former coal miners. They showed me what was possible, and my dreams were realistic if I worked hard. My first car. <laughs> I realize now that it was an immature way to think, but I was embarrassed to have my girlfriends over because of the cars I had. My first car was $300. My second car was $500. My second car was a Plymouth Horizon with multiple colored doors and broken door handles. The only handle that worked was the passenger rear door. So when I had to get gas, I would try so hard to keep the door from latching so I didn't have to climb through the passenger rear door to get into the driver's seat and have everyone look at me. I couldn't stand the feeling of being less than basic. I just wanted my door handles to work for my ceiling not to be caving in and for my ceiling not to be caving in. To be normal, 
I just wanted to be in the same ballpark as everyone else I operated with. There are also, excuse me, there are always people that have it worse than you do. Irregular access to food, drug addictions, and physical abuse plague families. In my case, I just witnessed a gambling habit and financial strain between my parents. Hardship revealed to me the significance of consistency and perseverance while helping me gain clarity. I needed to see I wanted something more out of my life. Fuck, I need to redo that. So this is page 10. I'm going to redo that last paragraph. Uh, I'll, I'll do this whole page, page 10. To be normal. I just wanted to be in the same ballpark as the people I operated with. There are always people that have it worse than you do. Irregular access to food, drug addictions, and physical abuse plague many families. In my case, I witnessed a gambling habit and financial strain between my parents. Hardship revealed to me the significance of consistency and perseverance while helping me gain the clarity I needed to see I wanted something more out of my life. Hard work. Growing up, I worked my ass off doing farm jobs. <clears throat> Three, two, one. Hard work. Growing up, I worked my ass off doing farm jobs. On the basketball court, I dedicated countless hours to be becoming a better player, even though it didn't amount to as much as I hoped. I applied the same relentless work ethic, plus studying to lifting weights. I fell in love with the feeling of lifting, and it changed me forever. I vividly remember reading muscle magazines and lifting cement weights in my trailer. I didn't even have the real thing, but that's where the dreams began. The dreams of having muscles, abs, being more confident, getting the girls and getting out of my situation. At that moment, I knew I was not only meant to do big things, but I was going to do whatever it took to make those big things happen. I, I identified a deep level with aspirational hip hop lyrics I listened to regularly. The come up, the opportunity, emerging from an unfortunate, unfortunate circumstance, advancing from lower income bracket, loving your job and wanting something more for yourself, wanting to improve my financial situation, wanting to learn how to produce more money and wanting to learn how to run a successful business. These are some of the thoughts that ran through my mind on repeat. Knowing there was another way was something I couldn't get out of my mind. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I knew I was going to be different. I knew that the confidence I had in myself would only grow, and I was willing to do whatever it took to change future generations of my family. I was going to be the last person with the name. I was, I'll have to redo 12, three, two, one, myself. Myself would only grow, and I was willing to do whatever it took to change future generations of my family. I was going to be the last person with the name Gregory to live in a trailer or have that lifestyle. I was going to create general cha generational change throughout history. Numerous people have taken it upon themselves to change their situation because they were fed up. I hit that very same point in the trailer and I never looked back. Coal miner. My mom remarried when I was 18 years old to a man named Randy Thompson. Randy worked in the coal mine for 40 years and had served as another strong father figure in my life by showing me the value of hard work. Starting out, we really didn't get along because I was in a party and messing around, but we did have two big things in common. We both loved lifting weights and we both loved my mom. Our relationship grew stronger over the years, eventually leading to him being and able to identify, understand my, fuck, start over, three, two, one. Coal miner. My mom remarried when I was 18 years old to a man named Randy Thompson. Randy worked in the coal mines for 40 years and has served as another strong father figure in my life by showing me the value of hard work. Starting out, we didn't get along great, but I was into partying and messing around, but we did have two big things in common. We both loved lifting weights and we both loved my mom. Our relationship grew stronger over the years, eventually leading to him being able to identify and understand my deep desire to do something wildly different with my life. After high school graduation, I landed my first job slinging lumber at the Noon Lumber. A powerful family in the area built a business around cutting wood beams, then selling them to the coal mines. These wood beams helped support the ceiling of the mines so they wouldn't cave in. This man was able to build a multi-million dollar business selling lumber all over the world, all while employing almost the entire town. Seeing a business of this magnitude up close had a huge impact on me. 
My routine at the time was commonly uh, <clears throat> three, two, one. This page 13. My routine at the time was community college from eight to noon, then over to the lumber yard to stack lumber from one to 10. I did that routine for about a year and straight up, I hated my life to win this kind of work. The schedule and money I made just weren't cutting it. And the lifestyle was making me miserable. I learned a lot at Danoon Lumber and I appreciate all the men that helped me grow up. I just knew that $7 an hour, 10 hours a day wasn't for me. I knew that I couldn't do the job I didn't love. I wouldn't help. 13, three, two, one. Last sentence. I knew that I couldn't do a job that I didn't love and wouldn't help my change. Fuck. Three, two, one. I knew that I couldn't do a job that I didn't love and wouldn't help me change my family circumstances. And that's when Randy told me he could get me a job in the coal mine. Being 600 feet underground and up to eight miles in working in a coal mine qualifies as one of the most dangerous jobs out there. The base rate was $14 an hour and over time was $21 per hour. At the time, there was such a high demand for workers that I was able to pick up as many hours of overtime that I could physically handle. And we all know I can handle a lot. This was also the exact same time many of my friends were leaving for Columbus to start college. Although a four-year degree wasn't something I was interested in, I eventually stumbled across Columbus State one-year exercise specialist certification program. This particular program essentially helped me achieve an elite personal training status. I now had a path. I saw a goal and I knew what I needed to do. In the coal mine, I was racking up 60 to 90 hour work weeks over four months. I then put in two more months of work underground for a grand total of six months in the mine. Before I left the Ohio Valley, I had more than 20,000 saved. I had worked my ass off for that money and I knew I was going to make shit happen with it. What I learned as a coal miner, being a coal miner is straight up tough. You become a man real quick doing that type of work. You have to get up with the intention to work your ass off for as long as physically possible. I was forced to prepare my mind for some of the shittiest work condi conditions you'd ever imagine. Shifts started at 5 or 6 a.m. and you didn't quit a job until it was done. I remember working 16 and 20 hour shifts. Sometimes I would work 14 hours, come out, then go right back in for another 14 hours. My work ethic had officially reached a maniac level because I had a goal, a time frame, and a destination. The money I made from mining was my ticket out. The ceiling was 38 to 42 inches high. I shoveled on my knees for 16 hours onto a belt that was so loud I could, could barely hear myself think. Water leaked from overhead onto a muddy, muddy floor while my back scraped the ceiling. And I shoveled coal onto the belt line all day long. When you work a job this hard and extreme for 16 hours, everything else feels easy. And during the same work conditions of the past family generations, it really changed me forever. From time to time, people throw hate at me saying, I can't really call myself a coal miner because I only did it for six months. Well, if you've never been 600 feet underground, rode seven miles into the earth to start your shift, you have no business saying that. It was 45 minute ride underground simply to get to my work site. Don't you think that's fucking crazy and scary? If the ceiling collapses, that's it. No one's going to be able to get to you. It forced me to fully understand and respect the danger this work each and every day. It's also why I have mad love for coal miners. They put their lives on the line every day so we can make sure we keep the lights on. I take pride in having been a coal miner. I know where I came from. I know how I got here. And I'm proud to have four generations of coal miners coursing through my veins. Go time. I put in the work. I saved the money. Now it's now it was time to go. It was time to put everything I had learned up to this point to the test. The trailer, the lottery, and the coal mine gave me the juice to want more for my life. And I was about to embark on the journey to make it all happen. When I was initially writing this, I talked about my grandpa being in the hospital. He passed away shortly after I wrote this. COVID made seeing him extremely difficult, but fortunately, I was able to see him on what they call the rally day. The rally day is the day before someone passes where you, ex you experience enhanced cognitive awareness and the function for a short period of time, an increased 
function for a period of time. This man meant absolutely everything to me. We were able to watch golf together in the hospital. He told me he liked my shirt and he told me he loved me. All, all, of, all of as if nothing was wrong. I gave him a big hug and said, man, he seems fine. This old man might be able to get through this. A couple of hours later, he passed away. Selfishly, I want to believe that he waited on me because he had already seen everyone else. My grandpa is my idol, and I miss him dearly. I love you, Papa. This is a great way to start the book. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Jesus. I didn't know that would be so hard to read. 